Oh, hello. <laughs> well, um, happy new year. Happy 2023. I am so excited. Today is the 1st of January. Um, I'm in the train, of course, um, and I'm heading to London to start my day uh, the 1st of January um, at the Dior Cafe in London in Harrods. And um, yeah, let's go. to the Dior Cafe um, and it's completely shut you know um, there's no one inside no one inside and yeah I'm like so annoyed because they usually open at like 9 a.m. during the week so now I ask around uh, there was a security guard who told me that they'd be opening at 12 so I thought okay mm. let me grab a drink at the Tiffany Blue Cafe which is just nearby and so um with uh, a few ladies who were also there um we made our way in got um, a table by the bar and yeah i ordered a drink um a cocktail <laughs> and the other ladies ordered tea which was i think the appropriate thing to do considering it was not even 12 o'clock as yet but um yeah i i, I do enjoy the tiffany um cocktail um, so yeah, yeah, and so the cafe opened and uh, we waltzed in, very excited, of course. <laughs> Guys, the bookings to this place are like, it's like so impossible to get a booking. Um, I think tickets went, uh, were sold out before, a month before they even opened. So you can imagine the excitement. So I was told that if you, if you can manage to get there around 9 a.m., you are guaranteed to get a booking so that's what i did and yeah there i am looking excited and shocked with the prices <laughs> yeah well they were not serving breakfast uh, that particular morning obviously because they've opened at 12 so it was lunch and yeah um yeah i did um, browse a bit to see what i could actually order and i thought i should um treat myself and um i ordered the lobster um yeah and then i had um i think i had lobster of course i had a glass of champagne i mean where do you darling and um there's my food uh so i had the chips Thank you. there's my lobster and um 
<laughs> it it actually looks very it actually tasted very 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 good i must say it was very soft and sweet um yeah so that's what i ordered and i thought okay i'd have dessert um and so i thought okay instead of dessert i would really like to try out the ginger biscuits because yeah that was i think something that i really wanted to to try out um the moment i browsed through the cafe and um they didn't have the single ones so the single ones were going for 15 15 pounds for one biscuit um it was just the trio left so that's what i had which was ish, guys okay it was 40 pounds 39 actually no 39.95 for the three biscuits um yeah yeah Guys, this uh, this is the one so very like honestly I I had to I, I was I mean I was in the zone. <laughs> yeah. So after my lunch I made my way to the Christian DO exhibition which is inside Harrods and guess what? It's actually free. So I was very excited for that. Um, the exhibition is about 15 minutes and I think they they present it in 15 minutes intervals so all you have to do is to just make your way to the Christian D.O. counter and um, you'll be ushered into the fabulous world of D.O. symbol in the house of Dior because in 1946 when Mr. Dior was walking through the streets of Paris questioning whether to follow his dreams of opening up his own house and his own boutique a star fell off the side of a horse and carriage and landed at his feet. Now Christian Dior was a very superstitious man and he used a fortune teller at many points throughout his life so as a result of the star falling at his feet he took it as a sign a sign that he should buy 30 Avenue Montaigne and open up his own house of Dior and he kept the star with him throughout his career. staircase at 30 Avenue Montaigne. Now this is actually a real life photograph that you can find online. It's one of the very first fashion shows that were held at 30 Avenue Montaigne. And Mr. Dior was not expecting the 30 little bees themselves in their gingerbread form, crafting away as they do so beautifully on a day-to-day -day basis. And if you look in the top shelf of this window, you'll see that many of the mannequins have the words Op de Tour written on them. Op de Tour translates to custom made. Dior prides itself on its craftsmanship and it prides itself on being one of the very few other boutiques left in the world and this is in Paris at 30 Avenue Montaigne and Paris alone. The way it works, if you go into the boutique, you have your measurements written down so that any time you go back into the boutique, at any time in your life, the dress of your dreams will be made for you perfectly to fit. All this experience, they have all been made with the exact materials that are used in the life-size dresses themselves and this is actually the process of the dressmaking. Start the miniature version, they move to medium size, and they are then made into the life size dresses that we see so beautifully worn throughout the Dior universe. And when everyone is ready, we'll make our way around to the back. Next up, we have one of my favourite windows at 30 Avenue Montaigne. 
can see Mr. Dior himself in his study, of course with his lucky star, sketching and drawing one of the beautiful and iconic dresses that we see throughout the Dior universe. And if you look just below the study on the floor, you will once again see another famous photograph. It's the very first photograph that was taken outside of 30 Avenue Montaigne. And you can see the model herself on the ladder, just as she is in the photograph online. Slowly making its way back up, we have none other than the famous and iconic Lady Dior bag in its miniature version. Now, the Lady Dior bag actually started with a different name. She bought the bag in every single colour. And as a memento to Princess Diana, Princess Dior changed the name from Shoo Shoo to the Lady Dior bag. Now, you'll also notice that the bag is in red. That's because red has become an iconic, has become the symbol of success within the Dior household. It's a true story. Mr. Dior would mark it how successful a fashion show was by the amount of red lipstick marks on his cheek at the end of the fashion show given to him by his models. When everyone's ready, we'll be have the famous and iconic Miss Dior perfume, which was named and inspired by none other than Catherine Dior herself, Christian Dior's sister. They had a very close relationship, and she not only inspired Christian, but she also inspired many people throughout her life, as she was actually part of the French resistance during the war. Now you will notice around the perfume, there are many different flowers. That's because many of the flowers that were grown within the Col Noir gardens were not just used within this fragrance, but within many fragrances throughout the Dior universe. And to this day, there are still flowers grown within these gardens that are used in the, within the fragrances throughout the Dior universe. And a little fun fact for you all, two of Mr. Dior's favourite flowers in the world was Lily of the Valley and the Rose. Mm. Now it was said that Christian Dior loved to share his successes with his family and his friends. He hosted many dinners and many parties here at the Col Noir to, to celebrate all of his successes and in keeping with his love for nature and the night sky, at the end of every night they would go up onto the balcony and appreciate the stars above them. Now of course, it's only right that we have our Miss Dior perfume, we have our Miss Dior dress. The two go hand in hand. Mr. Dior believed it was never just about the look of a dress when it comes into a room, it was about the smell, the essence and the fragrance that comes with it, which is why we have the Mr. Dior perfume alongside the Mr. Dior dress. And Mr. Dior actually handmade this dress with his own bare hands. Now moving from my favourite stop to the exhibition, if you listen closely and you look just down to my right, you'll see a gingerbread version and a perfume bottle version of Bobby the dog and Mr. Dior's dog that he loved very dearly. Now, if you ever see the name Bobby scattered throughout the Dior universe in any products, designs, or creations, he is a memento to his wonderful dog Bobby that he loved very dearly. And our final window at Le Col Noir, we have Mr. Dior himself on the sofa with, of course, Bobby the dog, creating a Here we have Granville, the childhood home of Christian Dior. It was said that as the house was right on the coastline, that when Christian Dior was a child, he would stand in his bedroom window and imagine that he could see the UK right in the horizon. This formed an interest and a bond for the UK, and after he opened the first house of Dior in Paris, the next house of Dior that he opened was here in the UK. And you can see Mr. Dior himself in bed, of course in Bobby the Dog, dreaming of the famous and iconic bar jacket, which revolutionised the fashion industry in 1948. Before this, women's wear was very straight cut due to the war, and Mr. Dior wanted to change this. So this was the first time we saw the figure of eight with the singed waist in, within a jacket, and this is how Mr. Dior revolutionised the fashion industry. Now, if you look in the bottom right corner, you will see a flat four siblings, two brothers and two sisters. They all loved each other very dearly, and they all inspired... Now this is said to be one of Christian Dior's biggest inspirations that we see throughout the Dior universe. The gardens here at his childhood home in Granville. His mother Martha would take him gardening all the time and she made him memorise every single flower in the garden and this formed a bond, a passion and a love of flowers which is why we see many fragrances, dresses and different products. The flower constantly appears and you can see Martha Dior herself with baby Christian. 
question, what's on the beautiful Arkansas address? We have another garden of Arkansas addresses here, in keeping with the gardens of Bronzeville, where you can see the flowery patterns reappearing, and again they are made from the exact materials that are used in the life cycle dresses themselves. And ladies and gentlemen, as we come to our final start of the exhibition, we of course have a star, because we want to make the luck of this new star with you for the rest of the day and the rest of the show is for life. Thank you so much for coming, very much for starting up in New York. Thank you. And it's a wrap. <laughs> Thank you for watching, guys. See you in the next vlog. Toodles!